Thank you for clicking play. This is PK of the PK Comic Book 411. Um, don't you love when you do vlogs and you look up and you realize that your lens isn't on? You've been sort of talking for a while and yeah, you're, you're talking to a dead camera. Bun! All right, we're going to talk about Marvel. What has happened to Marvel? It always seems that Marvel is the one that sits around the table and figures out for the next two years this is going to be our storyline. Hickman's was very much like that. New Avengers, Avengers that led into Infinity, that led into Secret Wars, the Fractions of the Universe, and came back together. And since then, that's what I would like to talk about now because it seems like everything's sort of all over the place even though they're leading up to Civil War II, which I think is way too close to the Civil War Captain America movie. But as we're seeing that the comics and the literature, should we say, is very much diverging from the cinematic. Much because of movie rights, whether they can say Mutant or whether Fantastic Four is involved. Mark Millar's Civil War had Fantastic Four very much involved. Anyway, moving on. This is Civil War II, and I'm going to put that off to the side because we're going to talk about everything that led up to that. Which one is Nick Spencer's standoff, which I call the Truman Show Jail crossover event. Um, I am going to go through the titles without going through the single issues to make this a shorter vlog. Let me just tell you that Jim Zubbs, that I talked about um, in the last uh, vlog, Jim Zub, which is very much a Pathfinder D&D writer, is writing Thunderbolts, and this is a continuation of Standoff, just so you know. Thunderbolts is basically a continuation of Standoff, but you didn't know that. All right, let me go over the ones that I really think are the flagship titles. Obviously, we have Al Ewing's Ultimates. It seems like this is the one that's taking care of the universe beyond everything that's happening on the Earth, uh, which to me was the uh, uh, Avengers, uh, Hickman's Avengers. So the Ultimates, even though number six goes off the rails a little bit in terms of art, um, but the Ultimates to me, and Thanos is back all of a sudden, seems to be the flagship that's taking care of everything that's, that is reality, if we will, in the Marvel Universe. Um, a flagship title, in terms of a single character, is Bendis' Invincible Iron Man. Wonderful art, wonderful story. However, Bendis decided to make another title. Why not, right? Write more. Um, International Iron Man. It's very much like a spy thriller. It's exploring the Kieran Gillen's, Gillen's number 17 Iron Man plot twist that Tony Stark is actually adopted. So he's not a biological son, and Arno is, but he's a paraplegic, and they needed to, to basically have a red herring child so that the robot that came down to kill the Stark baby is going to kill Tony instead of Arno. I don't really like that plot twist, therefore, even though it's a good title, good art, good paneling, I'm not liking that title because of that. Tom King is now exclusively with DC, however, he will, this is number seven, he will go up to issue 12 uh, before he leaves Marvel. And Vision explores, in a, you know, as a synthesoid, not an android or robot, it really explores what it is to be human. I have a surprise gem. Spider-Man slash Deadpool, slash Deadpool. Don't be turned off by the slash part of it. This is laugh out loud for real, L-O-L-F-R. If you, if you haven't been collecting it, get the trade. And hopefully the Vision will be collected in some sort of hardcover. That would be wonderful. So Vision, uh, Iron Man, and Ultimates with Spider-Man slash Deadpool. Those are my picks. Now, let's go over all the ones that like, what was Marvel thinking? Black Knight number one. It has been canceled. I was very excited to see it uh, as a new title. Guess what happened? Weird World. It just seemed like everything they did was like, oh, you know what? We don't know what we're doing in the Marvel Universe, so let's throw them the Weird World. Squadron Supreme started one and two was just absolutely jaw-dropping. Loved it. So excited. Number three was like, what? By number four, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, let's throw them at the Weird World. Because in Weird World, they can do anything, and uh, that doesn't affect the Marvel Universe. So they really didn't know what they're doing. Oh, Black Bolt's going to show up? Yeah, but it didn't solve anything. And then it's like, okay, let's wrap it up for uh, Road to Civil War. Marvel, hello, Squadron 7 is out. And now we're talking about Nighthawk versus Nighthawk, which goes to his, his own, which is like uh, we stand on guard type of art, if that would make sense. Um, Brian K. Vaughn, stand, we stand on guard, Canadian, 
mini. That's the type of art we have, and to me, it just seems irreverent. See, that does seem irreverent. So Marvel, what are you doing? Illuminati number five. I love Joshua Williamson, Nailbiter, Ghosted, Birthright. Just seems when they had to do this, it was like Disney art. I was ready for them to bust into song, sing Jungle Book. Here's another one, Hyperion number one. I love the Hyperion story. Hickman has a new, um, actually, it was, a, it was a decimal. I don't know if it was 24.1 or something. But in the Avengers, he had a full-on new Hyperion backstory and origin story. Now he's a freaking truck driver that doesn't want to uh, use his powers and some circus girl says, okay, you know, I'm going to help you become a superhero again. And now he's fighting some guy that's a worm boy that can take down a god. Marvel, what are you doing? Jeff Lemire, we love him and I love him through all the Valiant stuff. This is the X-Men title. So now we have a flagship X-Men title because there's so many, uh, uncanny and on and on it goes. This is a very good one, extraordinary X-Men. However, as I keep on reading these extraordinary X-Men, I, I can see that they're wavering. I mean, you have Iceman that may propagate, etc. That harkens back to previous issues. Um, you sort of have an update on what Cyclops did at the very end, but they're not really giving you the answers. Again, it just seems that Marvel doesn't know what they're doing. Um, and they're just saying, okay, everything goes to Civil War II, and we'll figure it out then. By the way, uh, this number seven is the wrap-up, like, okay, let's just all put them together, and the limbo part goes over here, and then we'll finally get them out of Weird World, because everyone's freaking in Weird World, every title went to Weird World, and, and now it's just like, okay, Apocalypse War is coming, so let's just wrap it all up, and boom, 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 everyone's back. Again, it doesn't seem like they sat around the table to figure it out. Hawkeye number one, I think it's the third number one Hawkeye. Again, I'm sticking with Jeff Lemire here, Jeff Lemire, Jeff Lemire. And uh, it's harkens back to, so you have Matt Fraction, right? That's a number one. And then there was a, a, a Hawkeye that went through some of the origins and a really cool art that flashed back to the circus days. And then they had to start again with a, with a number one Hawkeye. And this is like, okay, well, you know what? You have the Mandarin and the shield. And it's like, where are you going with it? Why do I even buy this? It's, it's, I, I even called it like drunken Perez art because in the future when Hawkeye's missing now because he's, he never airs, right? But now he's missing. And then you have Kate that's like, oh, I've never been alone. But there was a full on fraction arc with uh, David Aha or Aja and Annie Wu that she was alone. It was like, uh, you know, the girl in LA thing. So that doesn't even make sense. It's not. It's, it's not all succinct, and I don't really know what's going on. Jeff Lemire then, of course, goes to Moon Knight number two, and I have problems with that because I love Moon Knight when he was the Batman analog. He was gadgety, and he had silver for Werewolf by Night, and now he's obviously just the insane guy. It's a trope that they're just, yeah, he's their, oh, those are the orderlies, but no, they have, uh, you know, wolf heads. It's very predictable. Well done, but predictable. <sighs> you know what I mean? Karnak, okay? I love Warren Ellis, especially when he doesn't do the dialogue thing. It's very action-based. The problem with this is that they're forcing Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. in it with Coulson, etc. But you could really substitute anyone in this. You could put Moon Knight and boom, put it in that. Yeah, except for a couple of panels that he finds the uh, the flaw in it. It could be any superhero that you, that you want. Just put it in there, put some action panels. Let's go to the Inhumans, Uncanny Inhumans. Uh, I think it's a little bit irreverent to the ca character that Black Bolt now has a, a club. I see what they're doing. Black Agar to have, you know, a meeting place where people have drinks and they all, like, get mad at each other. Mm -hmm. Crystal saves this. I didn't know about Crystal. She's hot. She's elemental. She's powerful. Um, but, again, these are these are all the ones that dropped, people. This is, that, dude, that's a lot of Marvel titles. I'm like, it's not going there. Another one, A-Force. It's about a singularity and antimatter. Anti I'd rather read Valiant. Like, in a big way, I'd rather read Valiant. Now we have two that have exactly the same storylines, just change the noun. So Doc Strange, which I've always said was irreverent because he's dealing with mind, mind slugs. In fact, Bendis was doing a better Doc Strange with a you know, high-fi facial bro thing. You, you may know that panel. So now they start the Last Days of Magic. Last Days of Magic seems to me so this is superfluous and expensive. I think it was six bucks. Um, and it's just had some backstories. And the only thing that actually um, uh, Jason Aaron wrote was a girl filing books, right? And the other so stories are just backstories of, of different uh, Sorcerer Supremes. 
and there's the Empiricum that's going around killing all the Sorcerer Supremes, so therefore Last Days of Magic. And that seems to be exactly a ripoff from Colin Bunn's Let's Kill All the Healers on Candy X-Men. So we're going around and oh my god, all the healers are being killed. And this is Uncanny X-Men with no X-Men in it. However, this particular issue had Phantom X, and I remember that from the uh, Max series. We have a couple more. Spidey, number one, I understand it's concise, it's a bit updated, Peter Parker old time stories versus Peter Stark. And they're almost, this is another six bucks, by the way. Um, Peter Stark is basically the international Parker Industries with all of his web gadgets and he has, he's fighting this Zodiac uh, um, villain group and I dropped this. It's wonderful, wonderful art. Really, really liked it. Wanted to like this title, but uh, I don't like Peter Parker as, you know, Peter Stark. He's all rich and he has gadgets. Spider-Man and gadgets don't go with me. Bring the gadgets over to Moon Knight, if you will. Jason Aaron doing Star Wars, totally losing steam. I think they're just out of ideas or they're putting their thoughts into other things. Aaron's also writing the Mighty Thor, etc. Darth Vader, written by Kieran Gillen, Gillen. And that, it's, it's still going on strong. I do like it. It's sort of funny that Dr. Aphra uh, left Darth Vader and it sort of sucked. And then all of a sudden she shows up in Star Wars. So there you have it, people. What is Marvel doing? It is Tuesday. I'm going to try to keep on doing these on Tuesday. And I keep on playing my music in the background. Uh, drums, bass, guitar, whatever. Never like my voice, so it's perfect, right? All in all, what do I have to say about Marvel? I'm excited for DC Rebirth. Thank you for watching. Thank you for clicking play.